Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome to this edition of Africa Prime. Today we speak to Mosipa Matlala. He is president of the National African Farmers Union. And today we are talking about agriculture in South Africa, a very important topic in the country. A very warm welcome to you. And thank you so much for joining us. It is my pleasure to be here. I think just to start with this conversation, a very emotive issue when it comes to agriculture, when it comes into land, we are going to get into details of those two very important topics. But first of all, I just want to read to you one of the things that you were quoted as saying, you were quoted as saying, we believe that land must be shared by all South Africans without any reference to color or creed. Just speak to us about that because I think when we start to talk about these issues in South Africa, the very first thing that does come up is the issue of race. <laughs> You're studying up uh, a difficult issue. <clears throat> Indeed, we uh, look at land as a, an issue that is not in the hands of any human on earth. We look at land as a commodity that is God given, that God Almighty, whether you believe in him or not, has given a human family to share the land, to work on the land, to produce food if possible, and to build on the land and to create various economic activities in as much as we would want, but to also look after it, issues such as environment and issues. And therefore, we do not see why God created human beings, whether they are yellow or, or, or black or anything, should then be defined in terms of race, especially when they have to use the land. In this regard, I would, we, 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 we completely believe that uh, the race issue, in as far as land is concerned in South Africa, must uh, be rejected by all South Africans. Because, Hannah, you must appreciate that we come from a resolution of disputes here in South Africa where the leaders across the color, color line actually came and assembled at Kempton Park and negotiated the future of our country in a manner that has never been seen the world over. And I think we can use the same sentiments, the same approach with a little bit of creativity to that and then begin to say, all South Africans must now use the land for the benefit of the people of South Africa and the future children of our country. On the back of that though, you have also been quoted as saying that the current policies when it comes to the, the agriculture question are discriminative. What do you mean by that? Well, <clears throat> let me start by saying to you <laughs> that um, because of the imbalances of the past, and because of the discriminatory nature of agricultural development in South Africa at the time, and indeed because of the policies that were actually governing this sector at that time, I think the leadership or the new leadership of 1994 onward found it important, in my view, to then create new policies that would begin to enhance and uplift uh, black farmers in particular, so that, in my view, could then catch up. Having this understanding in mind, one would then begin to say that the constitutions that we have, or the constitution that we have in South Africa, that clearly do not actually refer to anybody as you know, discriminate against anybody, then you have policies that say, um, this is uh, the policies that are going to help the previously disadvantaged communities. But you don't feel they are helping the previously disadvantaged I don't. I don't because 18 years, we still struggle uh, to really um, meet ends means uh, um, agriculturally. And a number of issues have not as yet been resolved. What are those key 
For example, um, we have not been able to move from the past into the future in such a way that would actually assist and develop and create and produce successful black farmers, black farmers that would make a contribution to the commercialization of the sector and indeed that would ensure that South Africans benefit out of their work from the land. If you were to give us specifics of where have the policies failed to be able to achieve? Well, I would actually say to you, for example, farmer support policies, they are supporting exclusively black farmers. Secondly, you would then begin to look at, you know, the fact that indeed commercial farmers are not necessarily supported because it is assumed that they, are, they have resources in abundance. And I believe very strongly that uh, this kind of policies that purport to be assisting black farmers must be reviewed uh, so that uh, we comply with the constitution of the republic. We must use other method methodologies that are helpful towards building and developing a sustainable ag agricultural enterprise without excluding anybody on the basis of the fact that they have benefited. But of course, as a collective, black and white farmers must then begin to understand and appreciate and engage on how black farmers that have not been in the sector for many, many years, how are they going to come in? It must be a collective solution that would not negative, neg negatively impact on any group of farmers. Where does that collaboration begin? Who does it begin with? You, you see, agriculture is not the domain exclusively of farmers because agriculture impacts on the business world in South Africa. It impacts on the policy mechanisms in South Africa. It, in other words, government. It impacts on the lives of the people of South Africa, including animals and everybody that is agriculture. Therefore, the players should not be the farmers alone. It must be government, it must be private sector, business, corporate business. It must be the people of South Africa. It must be everybody. Because a, a country that whose food security margins are below standards is actually looking for trouble. And where does the role of the National African Farmers Union come in in this discussion? Absolutely. I must start by saying that uh, our role and the role of the farmers as we see is specifically the following. To ensure that there is stability in the agricultural sector and stability amongst ourselves is indeed to make a contribution that would assist the government, that would assist the private sector, that would assist the people of South Africa to have food on their table. Where does this discussion begin in terms of developing young black farmers, old black farmers, but black farmers in general, because one of the discussions I've had with you, you were talking about how being in the agriculture sector is something that some people are born into. Your family is a farming family and, and, and it's passed on from generation to generation. When it comes to where we are right now with black farmers, where does that discussion begin of when you start to groom these farmers who would then be able to play in the commercial space as uh, commercial farmers? Well, um, there are two worlds in the, in, the, in the agricultural sector. The one world is the world that we have just started in 1994, uh, which is actually the world where, when we took over in 1994, we had these suspicions that everything that was actually done by the other world was wrong. In other words, Everything that was done by our government, the National Party government, let me put it that way, was completely wrong. But it, 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 it is not, it can't be true. You must understand that the policies that they created at the time were very good policies. The only problem and the only challenge was that black farmers were excluded. 
and indeed they created other mechanism called development corporations under which black farmers were actually assisted. And if we have time, we will deal with that because we, we believe that our own black farmers are owned a lot of money by these development corporations because at that time, you were loaned money without actually being paid into your account. The development corporations would then, you know, uh, uh, control your money, plant for you, do everything in preparations, harvest for you. When you make profit, they give you the money, they also share with you. But when you make losses, it is your problem. And many black farmers suffered serious economic burdens because of that. And many of them are no longer in the sector. Now, while the government was, was looking after the white, what you call today commercial farmers, obviously helping them in many respects. For example, disasters. They, you know, there was a swift reaction to help them. The infrastructure on farms, you know, the, 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 the commodity boards, like maize boards, like, uh, like many uh, banana boards, you, you, the government selling on their behalf, the unions benefiting out of these systems. And when we came in, then the government in the, in the, in the new world decided to de deregulate agriculture without us benefiting. And that is where, that is the backlog. And, and we think it is not only unfair, it is, it is, it is an issue that needs to be reopened at appropriate levels in a very responsible manner. Now, the second issue that I just want to make, at in the other world, it wasn't only exclusively the government that provided budgets. Indeed, because maybe there was confidence, private sector was indeed coming on board. Private, like the banks, like the, the agribusiness giants. But one of the things that you're saying right now is, is in terms of funding, just being able as a union to be able to help black farmers get that funding. Where is the disconnect in terms of what's happening between the, the business sector, if you could call it that, when it comes to lending, and what's happening in the space of black farmers probably struggling to get the funding that they need to be able to grow their business? Yeah, uh, it is today it's very difficult indeed, Hannah, to, for a black farmer to really uh, uh, make uh, uh, serious successes in agriculture. It's very difficult. However, I must actually indicate that they are very successful black farmers today. You're, you included. <laughs> I don't think I would actually call myself a successful, but be that as it may be, they are indeed very uh, successful black. But we are very, they are very few. You see, we must accept that the banking people uh, throughout the world are here to make profit. They are business people. Uh, you cannot borrow money uh, uh, to a black person or to a farmer without looking into the question of risks. Uh, otherwise, the bank will actually be run down. So I'm saying now we have found a solution as the National African Farmers Union, which we hope our banking people, our banks would actually buy in, which we hope the government will buy in. And that is the system that I had already explained to you the last time we spoke whereby really the issue of a credit card system would actually work and indeed the business plan drawn by professionals would actually then be used after you have been loaned and you will only pay you know, what you have applied for without buying Mercedes-Benz or without buying something else that has got nothing to do with your agricultural enterprise. And that is the solution we are bringing on board. But this thing will be launched very soon. Well, we are going to take a short break in return. We cannot speak about agriculture without speaking about land. We're going to be speaking a little bit about that and, of course, about you and your um, business as a commercial farmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we do come back. Thank you.